Well, friends, I unfortunately have some really devastating breaking news. Uh, Jamal Bowman has been defeated by George Latimer in New York's 16th Congressional District. And this isn't necessarily super surprising because the polls indicated that that was indeed going to be the case. But nevertheless, it's really difficult to, you know, digest the fact that we are losing one of the best members of Congress. Now, what I will say is that if I'm Jamal Bowman... He ran a hell of a campaign, and I'm walking out of there with my head held high because he was defeated by APAC, specifically because he is one of the most vocally opposed members of Congress to Israel's genocide. So if I were him, you know, even though this isn't the best result, I'm proud knowing that I lost being true to myself and denouncing genocide because I think that's preferable to winning and being disingenuous and remaining silent and complicit in this genocide. That, to me, is important because we want people like that in Congress with true principles. So the fact that he, despite knowing that this was risky, still did the right thing and he was punished for it. And, you know, that's really unfortunate, but if I'm him... I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of the team because they ran an amazing campaign. They did everything that they possibly could using grassroots money, knocking on doors, phone banking, but it just wasn't enough because this this was a David and Goliath situation uh, of epic proportions. And that's not hyperbole because this is by far and away the most expensive house race in United States history. Look at this graph courtesy of APAC Tracker. $17 million was spent to get George Latimer across the finish line, and it worked. You know, grassroots canvassing and people power, that is very powerful. But sometimes special interests, they have a lot more power, right? If you were in the district, then you know that there were ads running nonstop. So this was going to be a difficult race to win, and unfortunately, Jamal Bowman couldn't pull it off. Now, what I will say is that if I'm Jamal Bowman... This is not the end of the road for me, because if APAC already spent $17 million on this race, I'm going to make them spend even more. What I mean by that is I immediately pivot to a write-in campaign. Now, I've mentioned this before, but New York doesn't have any sore loser laws. And so when India Walton defeated the incumbent mayor, Byron Brown, in a Buffalo mayoral race, do you want to know what he did? He launched a write-in campaign and ultimately won. Now, I don't think that a write-in campaign would be successful because Byron Brown ended up defeating the Democratic nominee who beat him because he took Republican money. Jamal Bowman's not going to have that advantage. Having said that, though, should he still do this and keep running until the end? Absolutely, because that's going to force APAC to spend even more money. We want them to waste that money, right? That's money that they could be spending elsewhere but if they still have to try to defeat jamal bowman well i think that alone is uh important um and look i don't think giving up is necessary when he can theoretically win a writing campaign because perhaps apac abandons this race at that point and then grassroots power really can overcome george latimer because they helped him in the primary but perhaps they abandon this race in the general i don't know but if I'm Jamal Bowman, that's something that I am willing to do. This is a deep blue district, so it's not like there's any risk of splitting this for a Republican. George Latimer is effectively a Republican anyway. He's going to be one of the most conservative Democrats in the House. So I think there's nothing to lose here. If I'm Jamal Bowman, that's what I would do. But if he doesn't want to do that, I understand he's been campaigning like hell, so he's probably exhausted and wants a break. But it's just it's sad that somebody like George Latimer, who is a bad person, who is racist, who said that Jamal Bowman has an ethnic advantage, was able to win. But, you know, he doesn't represent anything. He's just not Jamal Bowman. He's a plant that APAC recruited to run in this race. And um, unfortunately for him, he is not going to have an easy time as a member of Congress that's openly supporting genocide. That got elected because of his support for genocide. And I think that probably a lot of people are going to be protesting him, like other members of Congress that support genocide. Um, with that being said, though, what I do want to say is that this race was bigger than Jamal Bowman versus George Latimer because it's about setting the precedent going forward. Um, and that's worrying because now... 
my fear is that a lot of Democrats will see this and think, okay, maybe I should be quiet about my opposition to genocide. Maybe I shouldn't speak out as much, not just about Israel, but about any other industry. Because if they really focus and they pour a lot of money in, they could move mountains. You could lose your career. So the message that this sends is that you should pay fealty to special interests and foreign governments who have the political power and the means to destroy your political career. See, if Jamal Bowman was able to beat APAC here, like Summer Lee, especially when they spent so much, that would send the message to Democrats, hey, you know, you should maybe be brave because perhaps even though they have all this money, they can't beat you. But now I'm afraid that a lot of a lot of them will cower in fear. And that's that's what I hope doesn't happen. But it seems like Democrats oftentimes take the wrong message from elections, right? Like you never know what to expect. In 2016, it seems like a lot of Democrats thought, oh, we lost because Hillary Clinton was pushed too far left by Bernie Sanders, so perhaps we should shift further to the right. So I don't know what the takeaway is going to be, but my fear is that Democrats will be more disinclined to denounce Israel, apartheid, genocide, and that's worrying. You know, Jamal Bowman was punished specifically because he opposed genocide, and that sends a really dangerous message, not just to members of Congress, but it's a dangerous message about democracy that a foreign government's lobbying group is able to have so much influence. And it's not just an Israel problem, right? It's a special interest problem in general. You know, there are pharmaceutical companies, uh, lobbying firms for the gun lobby and whatnot. Like there's, there's endless special interests that can defeat these politicians. So if they don't just buy politicians, they can buy complicity, even if they don't donate to these politicians because they're worried about a primary challenger. So that is something that I'm worried about. Having said that, though, I know that a lot of you right now are distraught and disappointed. I am too. Trust me, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm gutted by this move. But take that disappointment and anger that you're feeling and harness it because it's not over yet. Because the next race is Cori Bush- v uh wesley bell that is another race that apac is heavily involved in wesley bell is the uh apac plant and cory bush is the progressive that chose to denounce genocide and she's also being punished because of it so immediately shift focus to protecting cory bush because we can still get the message across that you can be principled and still keep your seat in Congress. I think that's really important. Furthermore, AOC won her primary by 80%. So it's not like automatically all members of Congress are going to cower in fear, but we do have to make sure that we make it clear that we're not afraid, that members of Congress aren't afraid to speak up and say the right thing because of special interests. So the next one, we've got to defend Cory Bush. Just immediately pivot if you were phone banking or trying to get out the word for Cory Bush or get out the word for Jamal Bowman, shift your focus now to Cori Bush. Use this negative energy for good and direct that to Cori Bush. Because if we can save Cori Bush, that's that's good. And, and think about it this way. So at the start of this cycle, APAC pledged to spend $100 million to defeat all members of the squad. They couldn't do that. They just couldn't do it. They tried but failed with Summer Lee. They succeeded with Jamal Bowman, so if we can keep them from getting another victory with Cori Bush, that would be huge. Because even though they have this massive win, think of all the other members of Congress that they weren't able to defeat. Ilhan Omar is facing a pretty you know, strong challenger in Don Samuels, but there's less concern there than there is with Cori Bush and Wesley Bell. But all the other members of Congress, like Rashida Tlaib, AOC, they just couldn't find anybody to run against them that could beat them. So they've already failed in their mission to defeat all members of the squad, but they've got a victory and we have to accept that. But we don't have to just sit down and be demoralized and defeated. I think the next best thing that we have to do is focus our energy on saving Cori Bush because her primary is next. And if we can salvage her incumbency, keep her in Congress, then that's great. But you know, for now, it sucks. Jamal Bowman unfortunately lost, and it's not something that any of us wanted. But, you know, it's not necessarily surprising because, again, this is what the polls indicated. It sucks. But listen, if you're a leftist, this is not your first time down this path. Uh, loss is kind of like 
the expectation. And if we get a win here and there, then that's awesome. But I always kind of like expect the worst, but hope for the best. Because listen, I've been around for a while and, you know, we lost in 2016. We lost in 2020 with Bernie Sanders. We've lost countless, literally dozens, if not more than a hundred primary challenges against incumbent Democrats. I've interviewed all these progressives across the country and only just a small handful of them actually made it to Congress. So losing is just baked into the process if you're a leftist because you're taking on capitalism. You are taking on all these special interests. So of course, if you're up against a candidate that isn't progressive, that is willing to sell out you know, and take money from the healthcare industry and the Israel lobby and whatnot, then they're just going to have the advantage. If you say, you know, the candidate that I want to get elected can only take grassroots donations, that's going to automatically make it more difficult. So the fact that we've been able to have any success whatsoever is something that we should be proud of. Having said that, though, loss is going to be the most common feature of being a leftist because we live in a late stage capitalist society it sounds like copium and it is copium but it's true so you know don't get too down don't let this demoralize you because the system has a way of beating people down and making us devolve into doomers it happens to me so i'm you know i'm, I'm speaking to myself as much as i am to everybody else but just right now try to put aside all of these ang you know the, these feelings of distraught and anger, and just focus on Cori Bush. If you are productive, then I think that's better than being destructive and just getting bogged down by depression because we just had a major loss. Yeah, it's a major loss and it sucks, but we keep on moving. That's the way it is.